Hello, um, I'm Rebecca Williams. I'm up from DC from the Sunlight Foundation. Uh, my role there is a policy analyst on the local uh, team. So I look at open data laws across the country and um, I'm, I'm gonna go a little off script and just tell you guys um, what else is happening and why this is, I, like John said, um, overdue, not actually new. Um, there, there's a lot of examples out there of things like this already happening and I'm happy to support each one of these bills and even other bills that aren't at this hearing today that are relevant to transparency in New York City. Um, so just uh, going through them, first the, the open uh, law bill. Um, what's important about um, New York City's uh, current law online, sure you can, you can look at it in the browser and search by keyword, but it's not structured. No one has talked about licensing. Looking at um, the New York legal publisher, it doesn't seem to have an open license. Um, we had something similar actually happen in the District of Columbia last year. Uh, we had a software developer that wanted to create a bike app and he wanted to include bike laws in his bike app. Thought it would be simple enough, not simple. There, it wasn't structured, there was no API, also it was licensed, so it was illegal for him to include his bike law in his bike app and that is essentially the situation in New York City right now. And uh, in a world where you can get so much on your cell phone, uh, laws should be the simplest thing to get online. So, so there's a lot that could be done there. Um, and two, I think, um, points made earlier about not everyone having online access, that's more reason for having APIs. A lot of people don't have online access at home, but they have online access on their phone. So you're actually addressing a lot of the digital divide issues if, if you're getting things on people's phones. Um, to the point about the open FOIL portal, um, this is really, really exciting stuff. I think collectively all of these bills are sort of filling in what might have been not addressed in the open data legislation of New York. Um, just to zoom out a little bit, um, since th there's now 40 open data laws on the books across the country. Uh, that's a lot more than there were in 2012 when New York City passed their open data law. Uh, all of these bills address data that isn't just automatically structured and easy to release, but information that is the public's and that you can get in other ways and it's just difficult. Um, so addressing their structure and their format and making them more available um, makes sense. Uh, the examples of Oakland and Chicago and the feds were already brought up in terms of FOIA requests online. Uh, in addition to Chicago, Cook County, included their FOIA logs be included in their open data portal in their open data law, so that's happening elsewhere. Um, and then internationally, uh, Ala Vitelli, the, the international service is in over a dozen countries. Uh, th this is something that's not new. Um, and it, other places have been doing it for years. And New York City should do it because they've been a leader in open data to begin with. And I, I don't think you guys should lose your lead. Um, and then the last point, the, the um, city record online, there's a lot of procurement information there that if you structured it and made it more available, and made it available in bulk, not just searchable online in the browser, but made it available to download so that you could actually do real analysis about how the city functions. All, all of this data is the harder data. It's not the, just the spreadsheets you put on the open data portal. It's the stuff that lets citizens know how New York City is functioning. And it's incredibly important that these are passed. And if you guys need any advice from Sunlight, let us know.